Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call to order this Pierce County Council meeting and Tuesday study session. It is Tuesday, September 2024. The time is 12 noon. All members are present. Item number two is review of today's regular council meeting agenda. Ms. Long. Good afternoon. Thank you. So this is your agenda for this afternoon's council meeting. It is amended. Uh, we did review the consent agenda yesterday in study session, and there have been no changes. So I'll move ahead unless there are questions. We'll start with section seven, proclamations, recognitions, awards, and presentations. Today we have two proclamations and one presentation. Uh, first up is proclaiming September 15th, uh, 2024 through October 15th, 2024 as Hispanic and Latino Heritage Month in Pierce County. And that was requested by Council Member Herrera. Next is proclaiming September 17th, 2024 as Constitution and Citizenship Day in and September 17th through the 23rd as Constitution Week in Pierce County. And that was requested by Council Member Kruver. And then uh, last up under this section is a Sheriff's Department Staffing and Technology Update, and that will be with Chief Hausner. Under Section 8 resolutions, there are four this afternoon. Uh, first is R-2024-195, and this is authorizing the executive to pursue disposal of certain tax title property uh, by private negotiation without a call for bids. And this received a due pass at rules on September 9th. And the next three are all interlocal agreements related to the provision of law enforcement services. All of these received due pass recommendations at rules on August 26th. The first is R-2024-196, and this is an interlocal agreement uh, with the City of University Place. R-2024-197 is an interlocal agreement uh, with uh, Pierce Transit. <clears throat> and the third is R-2024-196. This is an interlocal agreement with the city of Edgewood. And there is an amendment, one amendment to each of these proposals. And those are your agenda items for this afternoon's meeting. Thank you, Ms. Long. <clears throat> Questions before we get into the amendments on the interlocal agreements? I don't see any. Ms. Kelly, to brief on the amendments. Certainly. Thank you, Chair Mallow. Um, Andrea Kelly, for the record. Um, in regard to the amendment to uh, R-2024-196, this is an amendment. Uh, there are two identical amendments to the ILAs for University Place and for Edgewood. Uh, unfortunately, there was a, a clause that was added in June to the ILAs that were presented to the cities that wasn't uploaded into EDS. Um, so this is uh, the amendments on this are to essentially mirror the language of what the cities have already agreed to. And uh, the language on that is uh, comes under the cost of services um, in section three. And it says rates may be adjusted annually by the county and the new rate schedule will be, will be provided to the city no less than 30 days prior to the beginning of each calendar year. The parties are authorized to negotiate annual rate and service adjustments and execute written agreements that reflect agreed upon adjustments. The intent behind this is so that the, uh, the sheriff's department can uh, negotiate the change uh, of cost of services directly with the city and not have to come back to council annually to update those ILAs. And then, so that is uh, the identical amendment for both R-2024-196 and R-2024-198. The amendment for R-2024-197 is a technical amendment as well. Uh, when the ILA was updated into uh, our electronic EDS, um, it was included as an amendment to the original ILA. And uh, for consistency's sake, uh, council legal staff um, changed it to a new ILA, uh, you know, promoting transparency so that we don't have multiple amendments needing to, that need to go back and look through to try to figure out what's happening. Um, and so this is uh, changing the language in the ILA, um, changing the dates from 2023 to 2024 to match the title of the exhibits. Thank you. Questions or comments about any of these three amendments? Vice Chair Campbell. The two identical ones here for University Place and Edgewood. Um, 
rates may be adjusted annually by the county and a new rate schedule. Will that have to come back to council for approval if we set it in, or is it purely administrative because adjusting of the rates could impact the budget significantly? It could, it, but the intent is that they not have to come back to council to assign a new ILA. So at what, so I understand this and, and not deeply opposed to it, but want to make sure that um, it doesn't create a budget hole that there could be an action by the department that could create a budget hole that the council would have to fix rather than the council authorizing. So I, I just want to make sure that we understand how it's going to work um, so that we don't get uh, out of order up here. Certainly. I think the department staff will be available this afternoon. We'll forward, get that question to them um, so that they'll be able to answer it. I, I believe the uh, the intent is that the um, the cost would actually likely increase for cost of living and for uh, CPI adjustments. Um, so there isn't an expectation unless there's an amendment to the contract for positions, and then those would come back. Or reduction in positions, I should say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> um, pertaining to the Pierce Transit contract, it, it is a technical amendment just to judge just the dates, but does their contract include the same language as? It does. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I, okay. I spoke before. You obviously <laughs> knew where I was going, mm -hmm. so. It, yes. it is embedded in there that they have the same uh, ability to adjust the rates annually. Yes, correct. And uh, the Sheriff's Department is in the process of updating all ILAs that they have with local municipalities and jurisdictions for special services. And that language is embedded in those those uh, ILAs as they come forward as well already. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, can cities negotiate to pay more so that if you work as a deputy in the university place department, you are paid more or are they all under the same collective bargaining agreement? They are all under the same collective bargaining agreement. Okay. Yes. So then mm -hmm. we see the sheriff's department contract to update CPI, like all of that would be done. So then it's just coordinating with, okay, thank you. I'm more comfortable with that. I was just like, wait, I feel like they're all deputies and it would cause some inequities within our department. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, any other questions? <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Kelly. That's everything for today's regular meeting at 3 p.m. We are uh, moving on to item number three, our weekly discussion about external boards and commissions that we represent Pierce County on. Hugh Taylor to begin our discussion. Thank you, good afternoon. Just one item to report on this week and that's the Pierce County Regional Council. Pierce County Regional Council has its regularly scheduled meeting uh, this week, September the 19th at 6 p.m. Uh, their agenda has few action items on it, but it does have one discussion item that I know will be of interest to the council and that is the uh, beginning of the PCRC's conversation on 2025 legislative priorities. Uh, so each of the cities and towns represented at the PCRC will be offering up um, their ideas regarding priorities. And then, of course, information will be presented by Bryn Brady, who's the consultant, the legislative consultant or aide for the PCRC. Two other items that will be presented upon. One is um, a discussion about ORCAs and uh, local environmental awareness. That'll be given by our uh, Director of Sustainable Resources, Ryan Dix. So that's the county uh, presenting that information. And then Port of Tacoma will be providing information, Commissioner Keller, on updates related to the port. That's what I have to report um, on PCRC. No activity at PSRC this week to report on. Any questions for Mr. Taylor? Thank you. Do other members have any external boards and commissions to update on? Councilmember Hitchin? Thank you, Chair. Just making everyone aware in case you are not on the Board of Health, our study session for tomorrow has been canceled. So there is not a Board of Health study session on Wednesday uh, this week. So just want people to be aware. Thank you. Thank you. And you have a State Association of Counties board meeting 
this Thursday that you're representing us at? Yes. Have you seen the agenda yet? No, though I was told it was coming out last night. So I'll ping someone and see if where it is. So um, the only other update I have is um, State Association of Counties is uh, having its board meeting this Thursday morning. The Legislative Steering Committee, which I represent the council on, will be uh, Thursday afternoon, and I'll be participating um, with a particular interest in two items that are of, of notable interest to Pierce County. One is um, what our legislative strategy is related to the cost of uh, indigent defense. And the other is the ongoing conversations at State Association of Counties about um, our strategy around uh, revenues for uh, basic core services of county government, especially public safety um, and the criminal justice system and how we continue to afford those, those costs of doing business. Uh, there's other items. So the LSE, the Legislative Steering Committee is in its, um, it, in the stage of where it's really trying to finalize its legislative agenda for 2025. And so we'll be making those determinations. Again, I think those are the two that are of uh, most importance to Pierce County that I'll be uh, actively participating in. Anyone have any other external boards or commission updates? Um, under moving on to uh, chair's topics, the for members got uh, our chief legal counsel's um, performance evaluation forms. So uh, that's all in your inboxes. And the hope is that we can turn around um, that first stage of the process by this time next week and uh, continue to move that forward. Um, so just reminding members of that. Item number five is other business. Communications Manager and Public Information Officer update. Shamanique, you have some show and tell for us. <clears throat> good morning or good afternoon, Council Members, uh, Council Chair, Brian Dominique, your Communications Manager. Um, behind me is our banner <laughs> that I mentioned last week. Um, we have that in the office that's available for uh, any Council Member if they wanna go out and do an event. Now it does need to be Council Business. Um, I use the example of like going to a farmer's market, setting up a booth, having the uh, banner there just to be able to, you know, answer uh, questions about what's going on at the council. Or if you're going to do a town hall out in your district, you can bring it out to one of their uh, one of those. I think where we'll use it the most is probably at our end district meetings. Um, so we have it for that. So we don't have to create a new sign every every time we got to uh, end district. So happy to have it as in our in our arsenal of tools now. And we also have a table skirt. Um, I didn't bring that in there because that's a little bit harder to set up, <laughs> but it's basically just the blue skirt we normally have with the county seal on it. So have a little bit of branding when we're doing our uh, meetings out in the community. Um, I don't have a whole lot more for communications updates. Um, been following closely with the summer supplemental um, that was transmitted to the executive. So we're just waiting to hear back on that. Um, and then uh, for proclamations, we have two going on today, which were mentioned at the uh, when we reviewed the agenda. There will be a pretty big turnout for those. We have a lot of folks coming in for the um, Hispanic and Latino Heritage Month one. And I think we have about five people coming in for the Constitution Week. Um, so suspect a pretty full room today. And then um, we have two proclamations in your packet, a uh, week without driving and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, the week without driving proclamation was not on our annual list that got added late. Um, so we didn't see that in pre-rules, but it's here today. Um, council members have an opportunity to review both those proclamations and provide any changes, any requested changes to the sponsor or myself. And those will be going to rules and operations on Monday for scheduling. Thank you, Mr. Dominique. Questions or comments for Mr. Dominique, Vice Chair Campbell. Thank you for the work on the banner uh, back there. It's, uh, it's well put together. It doesn't happen often, but occasionally we see groups who visit us. They'll take a picture with us, but then they'll get a picture, which is themselves, sometimes out in the lobby. I'm wondering if one are not using it for an in district or some event, uh, particularly on Tuesdays, if we could just have it out there in the lobby in case uh, people want to get a picture with it or something like that, or 
for their group. So it brands the group as to where they're at. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Um, and I think Tuesday is a great time to do that since that's when we have most of our public show up. Also a great visual to say like, hey, council chambers are this way, not the, the prosecutor's <laughs> office. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah, a great that's idea. That's get a little confusing when you step off. Yeah. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your work to continue to professionalize and brand um, uh, the work so that constituents can more easily identify what's going on. Thank you. Any other business by other members? Not saying, Ms. Long, any other business for council? Not today, thank you. With no other business before the Pierce County Council in Tuesday study session, we are adjourned.